God will reject you if you do this. What will I do to make God reject me, someone may ask. Most of us just know about a God who cares and is willing to meet our needs at every point of need. We know of God's mercies and the fact that he does not cast off whosoever comes to him. But if that is all we know about God, then our knowledge about him is not balanced. Such knowledge is biased. It is very correct that God's love is boundless. But if we are not careful and well informed, we will take God for granted to our own detriment. The Bible reveals to you and me that the God of this Bible has a standard he has set and we don't go to God imposing our opinions, our desires, and our standard upon him. The Bible clearly reveals to us that the standards he has set and we see in the Bible record many stories that reveal God's rejection of certain behaviors and lifestyles and even beings. God will reject you if you do this. What will I do to make God reject me, someone may ask. When we teach that God accepts all people no matter what, we are not conveying the true nature of God. The truth is this. This is God's universe, and he created it. This is God's universe, and he will one day destroy it. This is God's universe, and he will one day judge it. And therefore, the Bible reveals to you and me that the God of this Bible has a standard he has set and we don't go to God imposing our opinions, our desires, and our standard upon him. The Bible clearly reveals to us that the standards he has set and we see in the Bible record many stories that reveal God's rejection of certain behaviors and lifestyles and even beings. The pride of Satan caused war in heaven and he was rejected by God and cast out of heaven like lightning. In Genesis 3, we see that Adam and Eve, our parents, were rejected by God for disobeying his command to not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They ate of the tree and were cast out of the Garden of Eden as a result. We see Cain, who offered a sacrifice the Lord rejected. Instead of correcting his mistake, Cain became jealous of his brother Abel because God accepted Abel's sacrifice. And anger and bitterness led Cain to drive him to kill Abel. What we are looking at today, however, is Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. This verse can be interpreted and is interpreted in multiple ways. The reason being is that these two verses are complicated verses, and to some people, it inspires a great deal of fear, since it seems to suggest that anyone who denies their faith on earth will be lost. So my teaching today will have three points. The first point is that to confess him means much more than to make a simple statement with your mouth. It also means to back that statement up with a life that confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus began his subject matter by first of all stating that he will testify of anyone that confesses him before men to God and his angels in heaven. Conversely, Jesus will deny anyone who denies him on earth before God and before his holy angels in heaven. Now, the idea is this. The benefit of confessing Christ before people on earth is that he will testify of you before God and all his angels. And the danger of denying Christ before people is that he will also deny you before God and before his holy angels. In other words, when the time of judgment before God comes, Jesus will vouch for everyone who embraced him as their savior. He will stand alongside them before God the Father as a righteous witness to vouch for those who are his. The truth is, it is one thing to say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. And it is another thing entirely to obey his will and commands. The walk and the talk must go together. Don't just say you love God, Act in a manner that shows you love him. Don't just say Jesus is Lord with your mouth. Live your life in a way that shows Jesus Christ is the Lord in your life. My second point is this. If you have denied Christ before in your life, out of panic or for any other reason, you are not condemned to hell. This is not the unforgivable sin. Confess your sin to the Lord 
and he is faithful to forgive you. The full context of this passage of scripture suggests that a single, accidental, or purposeful denial of Jesus will not necessarily lead to Jesus denying you before his Father in heaven. We see Peter deny Christ three times, three times out of fear of being arrested. And we see Jesus restoring Peter in John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. We as Christians are not saved by perfect acknowledgement of Jesus, no. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So point one was that to confess him means much more than to make a simple statement with your mouth. It also means back that statement up with a life that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord. Point two is that if you have done it before in the past, you are not condemned to hell. You can still make things right with God. And point three is that this warning is referring to those who live lives that consistently or easily disassociate themselves from Christ for the sake of health, wealth, popularity, or freedom. The people who witness Christ to others while they are on earth without being ashamed to associate themselves with him are those Christ is referring to as those who confess him before men. Although they may be mocked for their faith in Christ, and some of them may be persecuted for preaching the gospel, when Christ shall publicly present them before God and all the angels in heaven, it will suffice them for all the mockery they have suffered while they associate themselves with Christ on earth. On the other hand, those that deny Christ on earth are those that are ashamed to associate with Christ or to associate with being a believer. They are the set of people that will consistently, willfully, and easily disassociate themselves to Christ. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 says, But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Anyone who denies Christ on earth, Christ will do the same before his Father. This is one of the biggest warnings in the Bible. Those who aren't willing to be associated with Jesus on earth won't be allowed to claim association with him in eternity. We need Jesus to confess us in heaven. So, to conclude this sermon, I have two questions for you. Do you want Jesus to confess and acknowledge you before his Father? Or, do you want Jesus to deny you before his Father? <laughs>